media that takes to fight corruption the role of young people african beyond corruption yes and i'd like to hand over the microphone to the moderator for the panel discussion mr akwesi akwa sam association of african university please put your hands together for mr akwesi akwa sam Hello viewers, uh, welcome to AAU TV. With me here, I have the Deputy Minister for right. Environment, Good afternoon, Science, again. Innovation and Technology um, can we have uh, all of us for come Ghana, to fill the empty Honorable spaces Minister so uh, Patricia Apiajay, and I'm going to be interviewing uh, Honorable Minister here. Politely, on if there is so please, uh, quickly, Honorable, thank you for accepting the interview with AAU TV. Right, thank you yes. very much too. Uh, it is my pleasure. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, Honorable. Honorable, um, please, we have just some few questions that we're going to be asking you. Uh, in your speech, you mentioned okay, that so government we've this is committing one percent of our the GDP way for the next into research and development. And looking at how so possible how do we, we make sure that this initiative trans tra translates into, into results the for the economy? Opportunities yes, that um, exist uh, for you Thank you and very I. much. And in terms of leadership, we business, technology. Say, and that whichever field the, that you find yourself, it is very important that we prepare the for the, the future. And we'll I'm so glad and happy that, that we have young people world, who have gathered um, in this room. And our vision is that we want to chart our own course for the next generation. And I want you to put your hands together for yourself for being part of this discussion. I'm just your moderator, Park we see some, and all of us in this room must participate in this session. The, the subject we are going to discuss is not so foreign to of us. Not so foreign. You and I are aware of them. People say that it started from Adam. But I don't know whether you also believe that corruption started from Adam. And to help me do this discussion, we have seasoned young people who are piles and prepared to digest and educate us how we can move Africa beyond corruption. For me, I'm the only one in this room who doesn't know what corruption is. And so I have opened my ears to learn more from our panel members. You are also like me who is here to, to ask more questions and also contribute to the discussion. The first panel member to be, to be introduced and is the Secretary General of All African Student Union and also the patron for Idea Factor in the person of Mr. Peter Koji. So, as you can see, the government is also trying to promote the STEM education. The STEM education, so you realize that the, with the collaboration between the Ministry of Education and the uh, Ministry of Environment, Science and Technology, if we're able to set up our curricula well, in the very near future, we'll come out with the products that will be advancing the course of our development. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, please, uh, AAU here, as the higher, voice of higher education in Africa, we are much involved with the universities. And then we are also preaching university, industry, and then government linkages, this tripartite. So in R&D, how is the government involving these stakeholders, the universities, in research? Yes, um, it is one of the gaps that we have identified. We realize that we have a number of university professors and students coming up with idea research findings. And these research findings are put on the shelf. And the people don't even know how to commercialize these research findings. That's why it's become critical and the, the dire need to establish a center for innovation and research. It, is an, it will be an incubation center and then we also look at how we can uh, uh, commercialize these research outputs out. And it offers a platform where even students who are coming out of the higher institutions can uh, develop the innovative ideas that they have. You know that by the end of every student day, 
you are asked to come up with a project. Yes. And some of the projects have brilliant ideas. But what happens is that in going out, they can't find the right in a work to do. Yes. And therefore, they, they, they just accept anything that comes to them. It kills their initiatives. It dampens the, the, the kind of skills that is innate in them. And therefore, uh, there is the need for that center to identify such uh, brains or intellectual uh, capital to ensure that we sell out appropriately and we also protect the intellectual properties. Yes. Thank you very much, because AAU here, as a capacity building uh, organization, uh, we've also identified the research commercial commercialization part, and right now we too, we are advocating for the commercialization of research in our higher institutions. So it will be important that we also collaborate more with the government on issues like this. Honorable Minister, uh, before I let you go, you mentioned about 100 million being committed to national entrepreneurial plan. Right now, the, the youth will be wondering, how are you going to make it accessible to the youth who need this fund? I think we have even started the initiative. Some people have been identified with uh, uh, IT uh, skills. And these people are being uh, put in, uh, in an institution. Uh, I would say they've created an institution whereby they take them through training by identifying certain uh, ideas out there and how to develop them into an uh, a acceptable uh, way of promoting uh, bus uh, business. So in, by doing so, you create a mind that will have an entrepreneurial spirit in it to make sure that it be so gradually. We believe by starting this way, we can also get these people to mentor other students who will be produced subsequently. So these are the ways to get, because it's not everybody who can assess it from day one, but at least we've started with a group of uh, uh, entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, who can assess this fund. I, I know that there's even a way uh, of building entrepreneurs through agriculture. The African Development Bank is championing that. And very soon, I think, as a country, we also have uh, uh, access to such funds uh, to be able to escalate or enhance the development of the right entrepreneurs that we require. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for speaking to AAU TV uh, and your time you spent with us at the African Youth Summit. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. I wish you a very fruitful and successful uh, deliberations. And I believe that we are not just here to just talk and go. We can, uh, the youth will come up with a plan where we will be able to measure what has been the benefit of this particular uh, forum. So thank you very much, too. Right. Yeah. OK, so over to the youth. Uh, as the Honorable Minister said, it's up to us to come up with innovative ideas as we go through this summit. This has been AAU TV, and I am your host, Ankuma Schneider.
corrupt there but how come today they are developed to the level they are today it's all about having having a focus that this is what we want to do and this is what we want to push out so that as a continent we can develop so i believe that it's very very possible and i believe that as we go further into the discussion we can also bring points on board as to how it can be done so i believe it is possible corruption can be drive out of africa so that we have a better africa thank you Mr. Gainford, do you think it's possible? Uh, it's an absolute yes. Uh, if you look at the topic, you said building our strong values, cultural heritage, identity, integrity, and ethics. All of those is out of the window. We've accepted corruption as the norm. The question is why? It seems to be institutionalized. People are quick to give something even before they ask for a service that that person who is supposed to do the work. 
So I say absolutely yes. But we have a leadership crisis. We need strong people and enforcement to be able to change these things around. How can somebody be paid? I'll give you a typical example. I went to a ministry, I mentioned a name. And I was getting a document. But we sat there for hours. And then people kept coming in. And what I saw was going on, they tell you the printer is not working. But when you pay, the individual who is paid by us or is receiving government pay comes in, opens the drawer, take the cartridge, and then he can print for you. Is that a norm? But it was accepted. Nobody says anything. So the problem is us. Nobody is willing to even speak up. When somebody, you are sitting in a trotter and a policeman is correcting bribe, you say something and you be the target. Why? It's we have to change our mindset. We have to change our attitude as to whether we want to fix it or want to be part of it. All of us are doing it. You go in and then they give you a little something and before you realize, people, the system is systemic. Things have been social engineered in such a way that it, I call it a cabal. That if you are not part of it, you'll be scapegoated. So it's systemic. If we want to change, we can. And that's why I say yes. It takes us, they say it takes everybody to do it, to fix it, if we want to fix it. And it's, I think one of the targets is also education and ethics. There's ethics in everything. In religion, you use the Bible as your ethical code. There's, that is gone out of the window. Pastors are doing it. So what else? So I think the question is, I say yes, but are we willing to fix it? or get rid of it? That's the answer. That's the question. All right. Thank you very much. Let me come back to our participant. Africa beyond corruption. Is it possible? And I want two answers. Yes or no? Is it possible? Okay, let me take it again. Africa beyond corruption. Participant. Is it possible? Okay. Let me know those of us who think it's possible. Let's show our hand. It's possible. And this is a, a serious survey we are doing. Can I have someone counting? Someone should do just a quick count. The whole place. Okay, those of us who think it is not possible. I have only one hand up. Two, three, four. Five. I think um, a lady put her hand up. Dufie, I would give you the microphone. You are the one saying it is not possible. Can you share with us? You can walk here. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, good afternoon. My name is Dufi. I think corruption is not going to end because we say charity begins at home. And in the houses, sometimes some of us come from houses where our parents like some of their kids than the other kids. And when they are giving them food, they put extra meat for them. And then those that are least favorite, they don't give them. Isn't that corruption? Isn't that bribery? Yes, it is. So even if we can't, from the houses, we can't even control that, how much more growing up to the other stages? And from what my brother Peter was saying, just a kid knows that if I give toffees, I can be a class president. How then are we going to solve corruption? I think even if we are going to solve corruption, it's not now. I think it would be centuries to come. Thank you.
Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us, uh, Ms. Dufier. And I think I'll only give you the platform. Let me come back to my panelists. What do you pick up on what she, she shared? Anyone at all could just pick up the microphone. All right. Okay, viewers, this is another edition of interviews, uh, interviews going on uh, on AAU TV at the African Youth Summit here at the AAU Secretariat. With me here, I have the Secretary General of AAU, Association of African Universities, Professor Etienne Ehuan Ehile. Uh, Prof, welcome to AAU TV. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Prof, uh, uh, it's nice to have you. Uh, we're going to be asking some few questions here because we know you do not have much time. So we're going to make it brief. Uh, Prof, right now, AAU, initially, we knew that you are the voice of higher education in Africa. And for that matter, you were much involved with management of universities. Over the years, for the past few years, you've been organizing a lot of youth events. Is this an indication that you are focusing now on the youth, or is it something strategic? Uh, thank you. First of all, let me uh, say that uh, uh, students who are part of the youth are also part of higher education. So when you talk about higher education, you should include youth as uh, students. Uh, like uh, you can see since uh, last year, we have uh, uh, organizing, uh, we have been organizing many activities related to youth. Last year, as a pre-conference of our general conference, we organized the Research and Innovation Summit. And uh, this year, we are organizing a Youth Summit. Uh, this is part of uh, our program and the program of uh, African Union. Uh, you know that uh, in the aspiration six of, uh, of uh, Agenda 2063, it is all about youth and women to be empowered, to be strengthened, to be also part of the development of uh, uh, Africa. So AAU as uh, the coordinator of the cluster of higher education in Africa has now provided a platform. This platform is uh, what you are, you are uh, uh, doing now by interviewing us, we have a broadcast, uh, AAU broadcast, which is a new flat platform to also deal with all that uh, related to higher education and higher education cluster of African Union. So youth is at the right place. Okay, Prof, uh, right now that AAU has organized IRIS, and now we've come to African Youth Summit. Should we expect more of youth programs in the years to come? I think uh, we have started the strain since last year. We are moving forward. And uh, it is uh, 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 certain 
that uh, the coming months and the coming years we will go through uh, this uh, this trend and you can see that uh, when you consider the personnel of the AAU the youth are more than the other one you can see so they have to handle the youth issues and uh, I think they are in the right way so that was going to be my next question because right now the population of youth in AAU is quite remarkable. So that is an indication that AAU is involving much of the youth and aligning the strategic goals and then plans of AAU towards the youth. Is that what? I think uh, there are many channels at the AAU. We have the programs and uh, we have uh, the, the programs includes also youth and we need a particular group of people to handle this issue and youth are there and we can rely on them and we should empower them to move forward and this is uh, the new trends at uh, AAU uh, we will continue to to serve higher education in Africa but we will serve higher education with the youth also. Okay. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, Prof, before you go, what do you have to tell the youth of Africa? I want to call upon the youth of Africa that uh, they have also something to share with the whole Africa. Currently, the Association of African Universities was able to set up a broadcasting this is the platform. This is the, 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 the way for the voiceless to express their voice. So we call upon all youth to come and share their thoughts, share their ideas at uh, uh, AAU platform. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Prof. Etienne Ehile, um, for interviewing with us. Uh, viewers, uh, as I in, as said earlier, I'm here with the Secretary General of AAU and we just talked about AAU and the youth. Prof, thank you very much. I hope you will thank me. All right. <laughs> okay, so. The SRC executive then took 900 cities to 1,200 cities as well as I took 1 million. That is 100 cities? 100 cities. But my principle is that it, is, it was not an opportunity for me to enrich myself in the office. The auditors of the universities are conspirators or are accomplices in the crime against students student in this country. When student leaders are leaving office, they package, uh, what do you call it? Their, their what, what is there, there's a name. There's a name for what? They, hampers. Very fat hampers which they distribute to these student uh, auditors in the universities. And over the years, it has become like their entitlement. During my time, I told them point blank that I was not going to give even a sachet of water to any auditor. If you, if you think I had embezzled any fund, everything is there for you to study. Give me the evidence and I will own up. But for me to give you any hamper, thinking that it will help you to cover me. No. I left school and I met the auditors in church. That's one of the reasons why I left church. <laughs> if you go to universities, you should see by then we're queuing for, to register. So you meet a queue like two to three kilometer long queue. And that is the point you test your own integrity in a small circle. If you came late in the queue, would you jump and be served? I could help. I, I hadn't become local news then. I could help 
organize the queue to make sure people didn't jump. At the point, the security was like, oh, you've helped us, so come and just, no, no, no. I didn't do it to circumvent the system. I came later, I'm behind this person. When it's my time, I'll, 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 I'll enter. So for me, it is a conscious effort I've made over the years. Very uncomfortable resolution to do my best not to be guilty of what I'm against. Mm -hmm. If you read Alan Payton's work, there's a, work, a book called uh, Cry the Beloved Country. It's a book that vividly illustrates the apartheid regime system, the social and political and economic dynamics of apartheid in those days. It's a novel. And it tells you that the highest crime is to become guilty of what you are against. So, Mr. Moderator, yes, I haven't. All right. I think we can put and I will not. I will not give money to anybody. Just last week, I'm, I'm on a project in a Kumfi district, putting up a commercial pigry. Mm. I went to, I had gone to the office about three or four times, never met the person in charge of giving bidding permits. So I had to travel last two years, so I decided to go ahead and dig the foundation. Last week, I started to pass by. I went there at 8 a.m. He wasn't at work, so I waited. He came, oh, okay, for, this is a commercial project, so you are going to pay 2,000 for the permit, you pay 400 for inspectors, 40 Ghana CDs for dockets, then penalty, thousand. don't you dare write 1,000 on the paper. I'm not paying any penalty to you. You're not a judge to impose fines in this country. If you think I deserve to pay a fine, take me to a judge and I'll pay. And he was shocked. We're not questioning the system. So the system is comfortably running and people are profiting from it. I asked him, why should I pay 400 CDs for inspection? I did, are the engineers not public officers? Why should I pay 400 CDs for, for inspection? Okay, so, so oh, Abeko, what, what has been fuel? your motivation? Just um, that's in a, a that's, concise that, way. That's a big question. My motivation is to be an example of what I want to see Ghana become. Okay. The kind of, the caliber of people I want to see in our society. All right, thank you very much. I think we can put our hands together for him. <laughs> Pamela, have you been associated with corruption before? Have you come into contact with such an ad before? What can you share with us? No, no, I haven't been associated with anything like that because I've tried very hard to be able to be identified as a person of integrity. Um, one difficulty I've had campaigning to the students is that they don't trust the politicians. And so I think he mentioned something. I want to be the change I want to see. And I want to be the starting point where we can cleanse this country's politicians or the political system of Ghana. And so, no, I haven't been associated with anything. Okay. Corruption. Let me go to Dr. Uh, Mr. Gainford. Uh, I will say no. Because corruption by definition is the abuse of public office yes. or, public, or public power for personal gains. That's the definition. And I, that is why I vow not to be in public service. I decide to be in education where I can make impacts and change and improve the lives of people. I could have got into politics, but I refuse because of those trappings and because of what it is. But, but Mr. Uh, Gifford, uh, corruption so is not only in the political space. It's, it's in education, but like, like I'm telling exactly. you, it's in education, but what I do in education is because I act with an ethical code. As an instructional technologist, there are hard and strict rules of what I do. And so students will tell you, when you have something, go to Mr. Mponsa, go to Legon, that's what they tell you. Because when I come, I'm straight as a narrow. I will tell you the facts. The facts, the truth will always set you free. That is my guiding principle. So if you want me to lie, don't come to me. I'll tell you, go with somebody else. We don't have to compromise our principles. Don't ever compromise your principle for anybody because that is your integrity. My grandfather used to tell me, good name is always better than riches. If you live by that principle, everybody will judge you by that. But if you want to live by money, you'll be your name will be tarnished. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Kingford. President, okay. have you been associated? Why are people laughing? <laughs> <laughs> because yes, no. they expect you to say no. <laughs> All right, so President. Okay. So, yes, no. <laughs> About a month ago, I was on, on a similar panel at the University of Ghana. Okay. The discussion was also about the anti-corruption. 
the youth, the role of the youth. And I gave the same answer, that no, that Ghana and Africa is suffering today because of money that is supposed to be used for public interest, being in one person's pocket. When I look at countries that have developed, when I look at countries that have become what they are today, and we not being able to get there to also use that opportunity that they have, we not being able to use that technology that is in that country, all because of personal interest. I would not like to actually, um, the money that the nation is supposed to get, or the benefits that the entire nation is supposed to get, because of me or because of one person, the nation doesn't get that particular um, th that project or that particular help that will help the nation. So I believe that corruption is something that we should not we, we should not associate ourselves with at all. And personally, being a student, you realize that there are certain things that go on that you realize that if this thing persists, it will really, really disturb. So one of even the reasons why I wanted to be a leader is that some of the things that other leaders are doing that you believe that are wrong, you want to be there so that you stop those things from happening. So personally, my students are here. Any of, any of them can attest if they've had any issue of corruption in our administration. So what we are doing is that one thing I believe is, is a group. That is, my slogan is, is possible together. So why would I have to actually, because of the students benefiting, okay. only me, I think about myself. And it's not going to help us in any way. So right. I've not been associated with any issue of corruption. Corruption. All right. Thank you very much. So I'll go to the ASU president, ASU secretary general, sorry, and who has been in student leadership over 10 years, if I'm not too wrong. And he may have a lot of things to share with us <laughs> on this subject. <laughs> president. Yeah, I'm, I think that um, it's like two answers, like the platform answer, which is no, because the platform answer, obviously, you it's can't no. see it is here. So the platform answer is no. So that satisfies what everybody wants to hear. But I think that you see, look, if you belabor a point, because if you Google what is corruption, mm -hmm. you will get over 50 definitions, definitions. of what it is. Yes. And each time it is difficult to pin something to a particular thing. If I see this color and it's difficult to call it white, it will be difficult to place it within a certain context. Because let's face it, as, as a graphics person, if I'm, choose, if I'm defining what is white, this won't pass for white because I'm using a color code. It must be a certain number of colors to designate this color as white. It will not be white. But you see, the moment I have to see this and I can't call it for what it is, it becomes difficult to see whether I've done it or I've not done it. Look, for instance, I have to pay, I have to travel, and then I need a visa in three days. There's a queue. There's an opportunity to pay for what they call priority visa. Okay. Okay. So I pay for priority visa and I bypass and I get my visa. Am I corrupt? Is that bribery? Is that corruption? Am He's I asking us a question? Am I inducing? Am I yes? Okay. Wait. W which is which? I, I am. Am I facilitating a process beyond the norm? No. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. So, if I go to, if I'm bidding for a tender. I'm bidding for a tender. And I want to expedite the process. And I pay an amount of money to expedite it. Is that corruption? It is. Okay. So when I pay to get my visa done in three days, faster than the normal process, it's not. But if I expedite another process, it is. Correct? Okay, so who gets to be the judge of when it is and when it is not? Who, who, like... Who? That's, that's, what, that's where the, the, the legal... System, okay. The legal and moral definitions of corruption... You see, uh-huh. So, I... The difficulty to pin... To pin the name corruption to a particular thing. You see, it is very easy in the math, in the applied science. That's why in the social sciences we struggle a lot. We say that... If I need to define democracy, there's so many, we'll populate so many definitions. But in the applied sciences, 
the definition to a particular thing is absolute. It's not left to my convictions or my discretions to apply any, I mean, whatever. The moment we can contextualize and we can put narratives mm. to anything, that becomes, it becomes increasingly difficult to pin it to a particular thing. Now, the possibility to do it is hinged on if we can create institutions that in themselves have systems that can check. For instance, Legon, they build, uh, what's the name, the tow boots. And they could have said the security men should take the money and account for the money, just like what happens on a Tema motorway and the other tow boots. But the moment they put a gadget, a technological equipment, the intention is to limit the who, where the money goes. But you see, I've driven, if you drive there sometimes, you would see that this person comes in, he doesn't have the sticker, and yet he does his hand like this, and somehow it opens for him to pass. The man does not have a sticker. Meanwhile, this thing that is programmed to only open when it senses, because there's a sensor that can see the sticker and open automatically, but somehow the security person inside there can open and allow the man who doesn't have a sticker to pass. Okay. Meanwhile, an institution, a structure, a mechanism has been built to check that this thing does not happen. But like Abeku said, you see, the systems in themselves don't work without the individuals. So, for instance, I, you come in to work, you want to check tardiness, those who come to work early, those who come to work late. So you log in with your time, your fingerprints, because the intention is that those who mechanize the system know that me and Bojan cannot have the same time print. So only Bojan can log in at 8 a.m. to say that I've reported to work and log out at 3 p.m. to say that I've reported out of work. So imagine that he doesn't come in, but somehow the system's administrator can log in his fingerprints that the man has reported to work when he didn't. All right. So the answer is no? The answer is, and yes in some, is in indefinite. Context. You see, it is context. As I've said, and I keep using the word context, context. Mm -hmm. It is not devoid of context. And that the moment you assume that a one-size-fits-all works, that is when you are failed. It does not. All right. Before we move to the next, Abiku, let me give you one minute. Let me uh, ask something. Um, I see two phases of corruption. I prefer using stealing. Stealing of anything at all that doesn't belong to you. That's so the definition of terms, it right? Has, it has a moral face and a legal face. If you want to stick to the legality of it, you miss the soul of society. If you want to stick to the moral aspect to if, where the, 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 the some excess uh, we, we, that can happen. I think the context of corruption is the person. There's no external contest for corruption for determining whether you are corrupt or not. For example, I give, I give very practical ex examples of Examples that I've, I've had experience in time, time past. Well, for example, if you want to, I all my life wanted to be a soldier. All my life wanted to be a soldier. So right after SS, I applied to the Ghana military, and I was told, no, they were, they were looking for BEC, not SSC. So I mixed it. I got UK, I, did, I didn't go, I couldn't go. And after university, I still wanted to go. By the age limit, I passed. Somebody told me, oh, you can, reduce, you can reduce your age, go and get new. I said, no, 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 I'll not do that. So one, the law couldn't have seen it in this country, but on my, mo my own moral code, I felt no, it was wrong to do that because I have been criticizing people who reduced their ages, got into public office, and now they are stuck, unproductive, and they, are, they block the opportunity of young people. Why, why, should I, why should I reduce my age to get employment in public office? No, I wouldn't do it. Now, there's, there's, there's no law in this country that punishes reduction of age that I know of, mm -hmm. right? But I decided not to do it. So you, 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 shouldn't, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be too legalistic in defining corruption. It is a, it's, it's, it's a decadence. It's, it's, a, it's a problem that we should start the solution from ourselves. If you are jumping queues in public, public places, start re reorganizing your thoughts, your mind. Think about the next person you are jumping to, to get served because you came. What makes you special? So let's, let, let's, let's lower the tone on legality. I'm okay. reading law, but I'm not so much in love with the, 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 the lawyers in town. 
All right, thank you very much. I think we can put our hands together for our panelists. Um, we want to go deeper again where we are looking at what went wrong. And I'm asking this question because when we're growing up, if you go out and then, let's say you go to school and you come back home with a mathematical set that doesn't belong to you, your mother will ask you, where did you get this from? Who is it for? And if you are not able to show or tell where you got it from, what happens? You are in trouble. Again, back in the days of the old, people were so much, I don't know, they paid attention to details if they are supposed to, if their yes was yes, no was no. If they are supposed to attend a public function, they are there on time. Because if you don't, especially if a chief calls you to the palace, you are in trouble if you go there minutes or hours after the call. If you do so, what happens to you? You are in trouble. You are, you are fined. Again, you could see that a lot of us have neglected our values. We have neglected our morals, our ethics. The very things that define our cultural identity are no more. Back in our schools, we do not also grade students when they come for lectures early, do they? If you submit your assignment on time, no. But what do we do? We are looking for students who will score A's. And so we don't care how you're going to score your A. All that we know is that you've scored your A. So people are doing all sorts of things to score their A's, three or four. And these are the things that are running down our moral code. And picking it from our panelists, the very first thing that they've all said is that corruption has to do with what? Our mindset. And it is possible if you and I decide to build on our own personal what? Morals. If you will not jump the queue because you came at six and it is not yet your time, you have to go through the process at six, it is not yet your time, despite your money, you will not pay to jump the queue because you think it is wrong, then we are fighting corruption or we are fighting the moral decadence or the issues that is bedeviling our continent, that is bedeviling our country. How can we build on our moral values? How can we build on our cultural heritage? How can we build on our integrity and ethics to fight corruption as young people? And that is very important. How can we do that? Peter? All right. Thank you. I, two things here. I think that let's try to why are we looking at Africa beyond corruption? Yes. Because there is opportunity cost to everything. And that the money that should have been used to build hospitals, if it enters someone's pocket, those, those hospitals are not there and people will die. That money that should build schools, if it goes into someone's pocket, people will not get an education. And the African Development Bank puts the figure around 148 billion thereabout annually. And this is close to 30 to 45 percent to 40 percent of GDP. Okay, now let's put the context into what number of schools, what number of hospitals, what number of um, kilometers of road that could have been tarred, and all of those things. So, if today we're here and we're concerned about Africa beyond it, we're looking at the opportunity cost, what we have lost by virtue of the fact that corruption is imminent. Now, this is how I see it. If you're looking at in terms of, like Abiyoku just said, trying to um, put it, give a legal face to it. And that is where, again, I would think that you see, this is from Corruption Watch. It says that corruption is the abuse of public resources or public power for personal gain. Okay. So if it is not public resources, I'm not corrupt. You see, so I, I just want us to get something here. When we, before we even come to the values, we come to the morals, we come to everything. The difficulty to pin the thing is what makes it difficult. It's what makes it like a sort of slippery slope that you are climbing. 
Now you see, the moment we shifted from the nuclear, the extended family system to the nuclear. Like for instance, in my neighborhood, look, if you have been, if an arm robber is on your neck, nobody's going to pop his head out of his, his house to look at you screaming. Nobody's going to care. The person doesn't even know your name, not the least to care if you have been robbed. Because my next door neighbor, in truth, I don't even know his name. We will probably wave like this and that is it. But that is what it has become. So unlike when everybody cared whose child this is and could question the integrity of that person, you cannot do that in today. It's none of your business. It's someone's child. If he allows it and it is status quo in the house, it is what it is. And you see, once it is what it is in that house, it becomes an acceptable level of code of ethics. But who defines morals? Moral, morals is not law. Mm -hmm. And because morals is not law, and you can't pin, so the moment you shift corruption to a moral issue, you are saying that you can't hold people accountable. Because moral is not law. It's not, you, you can't take anybody to court because, I mean, he has breached some moral code. Okay. You get it. So you see, that, and that is why I think that putting the context to the thing is one of the key ways that you can begin to deal with it. Otherwise, if you assume for all intents and purposes that I can define this thing by the color blue or the color red or the color black, and that I'm going to deal with it in this way, you miss out on the so many other things that fall within that same category, but are not red, black, or green. OK. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Gainford. Then I'll open the floor for a, uh, a participant. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of troubled by semantics and, and meanings. Yes. Uh, we just have to be, f be honest with ourselves and be frank and stop going about terminologies and what have you. Abuse is abuse. Miles Moreau says something. I say, if you don't know the purpose of a thing, you abuse it. People have a different conception. And that is what I say. If you want to make money, go into private sector or private, not public sector. There are certain factors within, risks that are shared. The risks that you share in private sector, that affects you. But the risks that you come and share in the public sector affects everybody. So people in the first place don't understand where they are going into. You don't go into public service purposely to make money. And if you abuse it, there are ethical rules. The problem we have in Ghana, there are laws. But the problem we have in Ghana is it's not being enforced. It's abused at all levels. So when you start and say about context and what have you, every context, even in our, moral, in our, in our normal days, our society have moral codes that enforce it traditionally. We are using superstitions to quell us. How many verses are told, don't sweep at night? It was just moral codes that we're using traditionally. But if you bring it to the public sector, where there is ethics, there is no profession as we talk about, mm -hmm. that there are no ethics. But if you abuse those ethics, that is what we are saying, you are going corrupt. And even without ethics, there are punishable or punitive measures against that. So don't let us play with names and semantics and what have you. Let's go to the facts. Okay. Corruption is abuse of public power and for your personal gains. If you want to be rich, go into private sector. I don't care what you do in your private sector. But if you do even, something even that affects private me. Sector, Facebook is having issues. Facebook is. And what is, and what is Facebook saying now? Exactly. Exactly. That is. Well, all right. Okay. All right, uh, don't, All right. don't talk about public or whatever. In whatever realm, the, in whatever realm is wrong. Abuse All right. is abuse. Thank you very much, Mr. Gifford. I, I think that... Uh, no, don't play with semantics and games. Okay. This is so, people's lives. I, I know this one would, 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 would get heated. But let us establish a minimum board of knowledge. Because that is why from the beginning, I didn't want us to define corruption. Because then you have the legal meaning of corruption. You have the social meaning of corruption. You have the moral, and then people will even develop other meanings for it. And so it is important that we are looking at the apex. How can we go beyond corruption? Is there a way we can have a minimum board of knowledge and say that this is where we are all at, and how can we get there? And in the next session, that is what I'm looking at. How can we, as Africans, go beyond 
bribery and corruption as young people? Abeku. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, I'm making an effort to bring the debate on the semantics on whether it is political or public. If you read the Oxford Dictionary, it says corruption is dishonest or illegal behavior, especially by public, by powerful people. Ma uh, Miriam Webster says inducement to wrong by mm. improper or unlawful means. So let's not strictly put it in public One context. context. Exactly. Because what, what we experience in the public, public sphere is a, is a manifestation of a character built up from day one yes. we are born. So it's very important to look at what we do, even as students, teaching examination room. It tells you the, the, brains, the, the moral cells of the brain is gradually broken down to a point that you don't want, you, you lack the endurance to see the process itself roll out. You always want to inf interfere and influence it to your undue advantage. So uh, what the public menace we have now is a product of a process. So corruption is not just political or public. It's a moral thing. <laughs> well, looking at how we should get over this issue. If you look at the topic, it says, building on our strong value, cultural heritage, identity, integrity, and ethics to fight corruption, the role of young people. I took my time. I got the notification very late. That was yesterday, right? And I took my time to see how I can break down the whole topic. And it, it's a very loaded topic. Whoever crafted it is a very intelligent person. I recommend, I, I recommend the person. <laughs> it's a building. If you look at the dictionary meaning of building, it says a creation or development of something over time. It says an art or business of assembling materials into a structure. Nobody set out assembling materials into a structure without a mental picture of the structure he or she wants to put up. So there's an element of conscious effort to do something. There's an element of the patience to wait for a process, to go through a process, it's a, a period of time. If you look at the operative word on, it gives an impression that there's an already assumption of an existing strong value and heritage. But if you look at the meaning of value, you say something such as a principle or quality intrinsically desirable. You ask ourselves, what value have we built for ourselves as a nation? before you can think of building on anything. It says culture. Culture is something relating to ideas, customs, and social behavior of a society. Or relating to the art and then to the intellectual achievement. Now, when you look at, we talk of culture in Ghana, everybody thinks, thinks about drumming and dancing. Where no fugu and kente. Mm -hmm. That's how bad we've, 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 we've rendered culture, yeah. the word culture. One professor of mine, Anna Kabran Katia of his study says, Whoever defines your world controls your life. A poor understanding of the defining word of your life itself is, is a tragedy. So culture is an intellectual thing. What we see is a product of an intellectual process, collectively or individually, as a society. So the kind of clothes we are wearing, the fashion that transpired before the Europeans came to rape us or river, was a product of a thinking process. The kind of food we were eating, before we became helpless consumers in Western consumerism, was the product of a thinking process. The kind of music we were even producing was the product of, I think, intellectual okay. exercise. Mm -hmm. And if you look at heritage, it features belonging to the culture of a popular, of a particular society, language, tradition, architecture, created in the past and still relevant in time. If you look at identity, say, psych the psychologists I define as identity as quality or beliefs. Personality, looks that make a person. What makes Ghana? What that has Ghana any identity that we can boast of? Because we talk of identity, we're talking of something distinct. Mm -hmm. We are falling for this globalization and other things. So we can actually talk of identity in Ghana. We are victim in the whirlwind, international whirlwind. So if you really want to deal with corruption, we have to start interrogating our position, our stance, our faith now in society. Integrity has to do with the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. The state of being whole and undivided. Last year, I met somebody made an offer on me, for, to me. It says, what wouldn't you do for money? I said, I can't kill, I can't steal for money. Anything that will interfere with another person's happiness, I will not do for money. If you want me to dig, 
this whole place for you to for money i can do it because it is my in, my interest my comfort i'm sacrificing nobody's sacrifice in uh, happiness is at stake i said would you want to be my gay partner for fifty thousand dollars now at a point i thought i was the strongest person in the world then my mind froze so i started thinking about what i could do with fifty thousand dollars so clearly, at that point, my mind got divided. I forgot about why I wouldn't do it. I started thinking about what I could do after doing it. it is, it's a challenge that comes to us every now and then. People are aware. Others are not aware. If you're not aware, you can only be, always be swept along. So there's a, there's, 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 there's a requirement to be mindful of how you live your life, how society, you respond to society. Oh. I think that has to do with the discipline, dealing with what Discipline dealing with what is good and bad, with moral duty and obligation. So, like you're talking about morality in the context of stealing or corruption. Leg when it, the moment you go into a legal sphere, you relinquish that sense of duty and obligation to be at peace with society. And think of society is now has a burden of proving I'm guilty. Mm -hmm. Ethics requires that you carry that sense of obligation that. Whether rewarded or not, punished or not, you want to do what is right. So, if you really want to build on something to fight, fighting means a determined effort against something. It's not by talks, it's not by conferences. It's a personal resolution you have to make, each of, each of us will have, to, will have to make. In our original African context, we had a very different worldview before colonialism. Success is not how many cars you have. Success is not how many houses you have. Success is not how many, how many shoes and dresses you have. In a capitalist thinking, this is success. In our original African thinking, success is the degree of influence you have on others. The people you impact. Positively. That, positively. That influence our culture of naming people after other, other people. This person was a good person to us. So I want to name my son. My grandfather was a very good person. He was, he was very okay. generous. He was very so, interested in people. Yes, good. So, Ab Abiku, in, in all, how can we fight corruption? Just, just, I'm, I'm just a participant in this room. I want to go out with, with an action word. How can I fight for um, corruption? If you want to fight corruption, start with yourself. Start with yourself. Revise your concept of wealth creation. Revise your concept of success. For me, success is that any change I set my mind to do, that I do, I can do, I bring about. Somebody asked me, Abeku, can I buy your car? I said, if you buy my car, I will sell it because car is not my, my priority now. Some, car might be your, your priority. Why? Because you, want, you might want to show off. But if the car you want to buy is not to improve your life in a, in a direction, you're just, you're just going to waste. You're, you're, you mean you're, you're not pursuing anything noble. So if you want to fight corruption, start with yourself. Revise all your worldviews. Look out for what you must do to build integrity. Integrity is built piecemeal. It's a personal project. You can't build society's integrity. Okay. It's not, it's not a mass project. It's an individual project you, can, you have to take. All right. Pamela, Africa beyond corruption, how can we get there? Mm, I believe that this problem with corruption started when we started losing our identity as Africans. And so when we started thinking about me, myself, and I, and it wasn't about the society anymore, it wasn't about my neighbor, and so I think if we can make a cautious effort to develop our personal values, our communal values, and then really, really stick by the word empathy and think about others, I think we can, we can deal with the situation of um, corruption. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me come back to you, uh, SRC President. How do we fight corruption? I'd like to delve deep, uh, deeper into the mindset reforms. Mm. I believe that is the main point that we are supposed to take from here. Mindset reformation or mindset reforms. Some people see, um, they see the opportunity of entering into offices, like becoming leaders in offices, and they think that for me to be successful in that office, I would have to do something. Uh, I have to, let me say, pilfering, malingering before I can become successful. I believe that is false. For you to become successful, it's not about you using false means. Also, some people think that before maybe I can win this position, I have to give somebody this. Some people also think that before I can become this, I have to give this person this. And in Ghana and some 
other countries, we can have places where there's examination okay. and there's no invigilator. People sit one another and they do the work without anybody invigilating them. You see, so they have made a con uh, the conscious effort. They have, uh, they have made that mindset that we are not going to be corrupt. So it's all about your mindset. Don't think that for you to be successful, you have to go through false means. Okay. You can be successful. So don't, don't always focus. When you see the rich men driving their cars, don't think that is true false means. You can be successful if you go through the right means. So as young Africans, let's begin to uh, have that mindset with formation that in getting there and becoming successful, it is true, it's not true uh, false means or in getting to where we want to get to. We don't have to bribe somebody. We don't have to give somebody something before we can get there. And the principles of integrity, accountability, and responsibility, let it always drive us. That is our moral ethics. Let it always drive us. Let us always think about being... Having the values of integrity, everything that you do, you are very honest. When somebody wants to put